our responsibility here tonight and the reason we gathered and asked you to partner with us is because we need to hear from you, the students and parents, because you're the experts when it comes to school. We need to hear from you what challenges you are facing, and that includes parents, what you need from the schools, what you need from social service organizations, and what you need from community organizations, because we are a community, we're all in this together. It's our job here tonight to do two things, to create awareness of the issues and also the resources in order for students to, to go ahead and, and succeed. What do you feel is the biggest challenge that keeps high school students from graduating? The biggest challenge, I, I would say, is a matter of hope. I think there are a number of teachers who are really excellent uh, and schools that do care, but it takes a community. You know, all students come to school with their backpacks, but many students come to school with an extra backpack. So that first backpack has all the, the books and papers and pencils in it. The second backpack for many of the students coming in, into school has issues of they don't have enough clothing, they don't have a place to live, um, they don't have utilities that, uh, that are working, um, and, and there, there may be vi uh, domestic violence in the home or whatever it might be. Low expectations, bullying, gang wars. School's giving up on kids. When they go to conferences, the teachers talk English and they really don't know Spanish, so the parents don't really know what's going on with the students, so they really can't tell them. Keep on doing what you're doing, you're doing good, when they really don't know that they're doing bad. A lack of support from not only um, parents, but a lot of teachers aren't involved, like they could be. Um, the influence from the people that they hang around is um, also an issue that I've seen because if you hang out with the wrong crowd, you're bound to end up dropping out or getting behind, not going to class, not turning in work. What we hear over and over again from youth is that they don't feel respected. They don't feel respected by the staff, by the security guards, um, by the teachers, and it's creating an environment where students feel like they're coming against the school. The goal is coming against the students instead of a partnership. Get education. Well, you're not promised a job anyway. And, and some kids, quite frankly, feel like, well, hey, why go to school, spend this amount, amount of dollars? There's not going to be a job for me anyway. Me, personally, every time you hear, oh, did you make me get past this hand? It's like discouraging because, like, all this hard work you're doing to um, middle school, high school, and then when you once you get to college and then you realize that you need so many numbers to or have some legal paper to prove you're here to have the job you've been so hard um, fighting for. It. It's like, you know, you don't see why you want so many years of studying when no one's going to really give you the opportunity you want it. It's probably about will. Have we ever had the will to make sure that all students are well educated? The answer is no. We've seen the day that certainly in the Grand Rapids Public Schools, we Children start out at a, at a deficit before they come to school. We get them up to grade level of third grade. From third grade on, it, the trajectory goes downhill. We, this, we've watched this happen for decades. And we wring our hands, and we come up with all kinds of programs, billions of dollars, and at the end, we're no better off than we were when we started with the problem. So this is about will. We have a very big problem on our hands. What things can, can we do as individuals and what can we do together to try to inch forward in improving uh, performance in school by students and graduating? Because the statistics show that when kids don't graduate, it has dramatic negative effects on that student over time and it impacts families and it impacts entire communities. Education is a key to anything and if you can read and if you do have an education, you can go any place you want to. Having one-on-one -on -one involvement with teachers is a big help in um, getting ready for college and for reality. It's like, okay, isn't it your job to motivate me and make sure that you're doing whatever you can to support my decision and make sure I'm going to graduate someday? What are the expectations of our, from our parents and from our teachers? Are the teachers expect, expecting the kids to graduate? Are they holding them accountable for what they are doing? Are they supporting them for what they're doing? Us as kids, we're taught to do a little, you can do whatever you want to do. 
and we shouldn't be shooting down our friends' dreams, as well as adults in our lives shouldn't be shooting down our dreams. If we want to do something, we can get there. There are a whole host of things that have gone on in the Grand Rapids Public Schools in spite of the fact that over the past 10 years we have cut $90 million from our operating budget. There's a lot more we have to do. Relationships, relationships, relationships. I have to blame the person who is standing in front of that classroom. It is about relationships. That child will come to school, you make him or her feel good about being there, and do your, do, we do our jobs and make sure we're not undereducating our kids. One of the, someone said a little while ago, how can you think about study when you're thinking about surviving? And uh, if that doesn't drive home the fact that we need a community to support one another, I don't know what does. What can we do as individuals in our homes starting tonight and in the community with organizations down the street or neighbor to neighbor? We should address our children with everything positive, starting out with early education, starting young. Starting young with creating an atmosphere of college going, and I don't mean necessarily always a four year college, but a college going culture. Kids do need hope, and they need to know that when you live in a inner city, you can still get good grades and you can still go to college. They need relationships of caring adults to help them succeed, both in the home and in the school. They need relevant content. They need to know how they're going to use what they're learning in order to be engaged in that. We're trying to do some things differently at Gerald Ford. We're uh, doing some things to just bring the whole family in. I want to say it's essential for Corral and Robert to be in place. And to that extent, our school district can never give up hope on uh, bringing the parent into the, to the door of that school building. Working with those families, helping those parents. Every parent wants to do what's best for their children. Every parent has a dream for their child. We just want to help them realize it and help them to help their children realize it as well. We need to make sure we empower people instead of constantly doing things to enable people to not take control of their own situation with their own children. It is absolutely critical that each college and university and um, child caring program is involved more than they are now in the Kent County College Access Program. Listening to the young people here tonight and in our schools every day get their feedback on what is working and what is The two magic ingredients are hope and will. We have to have meetings like this where we force and we have the will to say that there are no excuses. We will achieve. We're going to get parents involved, community involved, teachers involved. Everybody's going to move this field forward.